Hey guys, Rollout here with a Cap Revolution Bottleman review. Today we're taking a look at BOT01 Kola Maru, who is the protagonist blaster of this new spiritual reimagining of Beatemon, where they shoot bottle caps instead of marbles in an effort to save money, save the planet, and to generally just make the whole thing more accessible. I can understand if you're less interested in this concept. I think that bottle caps are objectively less cool than marbles. At the very least, they have less weight to them. But that has some interesting ramifications for performance. And considering Beatemon has always advertised using recyclable bottles as targets, I think the whole idea is actually pretty brilliant. As always, we'll take a quick look at the packaging. This time it's tall and thin, evoking a bottle shape with this bottle cap tab up top here. It also means that you can use the packaging itself for target practice, which is really nice. Overall, it just has a very pleasing design to it. I especially like the top side here. And of course, every bottle man is based off of a different kind of bottled drink. In Kolomaru's case, He's pretty clearly based off of Coca-Cola. So here is that size comparison. This is actually a Japanese Coca-Cola bottle for extra authenticity. On this side, it's reported as an eco toy. You are meant to recycle your bottles, get rid of the label, and use the cap as ammunition. Then of course you can use the bottle itself as a target. On this side, you have an ad for the other products in the line, and on this side, you have all of the individual components of Kolomaru. Notice that there isn't a stat table to be found. Bottle Man has done away with that arbitrary scale of numbers which was rarely ever accurate, so I'm fine with it. On the front here, you can see Kolomaru with all of his stickers fully applied, so take a good look at that because if you know me well, you know that we don't do that here. Here is the sticker sheet. You can see it has this metallic sheen to it, very similar to the early Battle Beatemon. The original Japanese Cobalt Blade had metallic stickers just like this. I really like the eyes. You can see they have this sort of digital static to them, which is going along with the electronic age Nintendo Switch play pattern that this line has going for it. Inside are also the instructions. You can see I didn't even take them out. This guy is pretty straightforward, but it is worth mentioning that this time the parts do not come on sprues. Takara took a page from Zoid's Wild and the parts are pre-cut and individually bagged. Building a bottle man is a little bit like building a Lego set, which is super refreshing. It still gives you the satisfaction of having built something, but it's a whole lot easier on your fingers. Now each bottle man has a unique bottle shaped core, which is why all of them have a bottle cap on top of their head. It's a little bit silly, but I think it's super charming and I like the concept a lot. Now this bottle cap is removable. You can unscrew it from the top of the head, but it's worth noting the core is not completely hollow and there's nothing particularly exciting under there. In this set, you get two official bottle caps, one in red meant for the top of the head and another in orange, which is Kola Maru's typical ammunition color. However, both are compatible with the core, and in times of need, you can pull this off the top of his head and load it as ammunition. Now, they are selling an official bottle cap booster pack. However, you are encouraged to utilize your recycled bottle caps. For comparison, here is an American Coca Cola bottle cap. You can just Smell the high fructose corn syrup through the camera, can't you? It is sized a little bit differently. It's a little bit shorter, a little bit lighter, and more importantly, the grip shape is much, much different. However, Kolomaru will still accept and fire a bottle cap like this. It's going to perform a little bit differently, but it does work. 
Now, in Japan, they have much more strict bottle cap regulations, and because of that, the sizes are more standardized. For instance, here is a Japanese Coca-Cola bottle cap, which Kolamaru is clearly styled after here. Now, while the inside is a little bit different as far as weight and dimensions go, these two are almost exact. And it seems clear to me that Takara based their official bottle man ammunition off of this. So that's worth considering. Let's reattach the bottle cap and discuss the mechanics of the core itself. If you're used to beat em on, you'll notice that the trigger has been flipped. This is to provide a more even amount of pressure on a bottle cap. Kolamaru specifically has this bird tail shaped trigger pad, which has a lot of surface area for power shots. Now this trigger pad is permanently affixed to this trigger. It is not meant to be swapped and it is meant to be associated with this core specifically. There is kind of a ramp shape shape internally, making it easy to reload a bottle cap. Official capacity is one. You are able to kind of jam a second one in here, but it certainly does not fit comfortably, and it's not meant to be played with in this way. Now, there's a lot of room up in the head here, and unfortunately, that means a bottle cap can get dislodged. It can be loaded improperly like this. At first, I thought this was a design flaw, but you'll notice that there is a little bit of wiggle room here. And if there were any extra plastic in the head, it's possible that the bottle cap could get properly jammed and in fact damaged. It's designed this way in order to prevent that. Furthermore, you can reset the ammunition just by pressing in the trigger like this. This is a super smart piece of design and I'm glad they thought of it. It's super annoying when you're in the middle of a battle and this happens, but the ingenuity is definitely appreciated. Now this being a protagonist blaster, of course it has a rubber drive strip and this one in particular is very resilient. It's a very tough piece of rubber that after prolonged use has held up really, really well. This adds a right spin to each of your shots, and the forces that this applies to each shot is very unique. Shots will come out of this core very slowly, more slowly than you expect, but a lot of that force goes directly into the spin shot, and then that spin transfers into each target in a very interesting way. It's a little bit unpredictable, but it's super flashy and a lot of fun, and in certain situations, extremely effective. But we will explore that a little bit later. First, I want to demonstrate that it is possible to fire a bottle man without any of the armor parts. It's not particularly optimized and it's a little uncomfortable, but it is possible. I also want to mention that if you're used to beat em on, firing a bottle man for the first time is a little bit unfamiliar and honestly kind of scary. There's a lot more resistance than you expect, and you have to apply forces in ways you're just not used to. There's definitely a learning curve to it. Speaking of forces, another thing I have to point out is that there are stress marks beginning to develop on this core. It's a little bit worse on the left side over here. Now this is caused by the way these hold parts are attached and how tension forces them to push outwardly on the core itself. Now, so far, this is not affecting performance in any significant way, but I have seen some devastating horror stories on Twitter, and only time will tell if this is going to lead to any greater overall breakage. 
With that terrifying notion aside, let's take a look at his armor parts, starting with the legs. These are my favorite visually of the first three bottle man. You can see they have these clawed toes here, looking a little more like dragon claws than bird claws, but I digress. There's a decent amount of surface area down here and a lot of forward-facing mass to rest your fingers on. You can see there's a clip up front, a peg in the middle, and a clip at the back. To attach this to the core, you just line this hook up with the front of the bottle man, line up that peg in the middle, and snap it on with a very satisfying click. Now you can see there is a ledge back here on the heel for removing it. And removing these legs is another thing that is going to be very scary the first time you do it. Ah. Especially so on Kolomaru. You can see that there is a lot of supporting mass on this clip back here. Much more so than there is on Aqua Sports or Gyokurok. Now, I imagine what happened here is that they weren't confident in the solidity of this component, and at first they overcompensated with extra plastic back here, but once they realized this was very difficult to remove, uh, they toned it back on the other two releases and then forgot to retroactively redesign Kolomaru. Whatever the case, his leg parts are much scarier to remove than the other two. He has a second pair of claws on his arm parts, which is strange. You also have these large wing grips, very similar to Cannon Drive Garu Burn. Now, a bottle man's arms are their hold parts, and these attach directly to them, meaning you can add power to your shot by pressing on the claws. All three bottle men are capable of doing this, but both Aqua Sports and Gyokurok have limiters in place, stopping you from pressing them too far. Kolomaru has no such limitations, meaning you have full control over how much tension is applied, very similar to an emblem charge. Now, abusing this attribute is what causes those stress marks to get worse and worse, so do be careful. His head crest is probably the weakest of the three competitively, considering it doesn't offer any sight to speak of, but it's still pretty awesome visually. You can see it has this half circle, and that is going to clip around the bottle cap and rest in these indents back here. Removing it is also pretty simple. You're just going to twist it around the head and pull it right off. Of course, reattaching it is extremely satisfying. I love how it just sort of looks like a cool looking helmet design until you start to recognize the beak and the eyes and the feathers and all of a sudden that bird face is just really striking and recognizable. Here he is compared to a couple of other vermilion birds and I have to say that the aesthetic of Bottle Man really works for me. All of the edges are so crisp and clean, and all of the molded detail is so sharp and well-defined. I really liked the statuesque ancient relic vibe of Crossfight, but in hindsight, the detail is just kind of, for lack of a better word, fuzzy? Blurry? It's just less polished than Bottle Man. These blasters are also so blocky and chunky, and they feel good to hold. For example, Garu Burn weighs about 40 grams in total, and Kolomaru weighs 60. He's just a more substantial toy. For old time's sake, we're gonna do some test shots on the Beast BV, but I have to preface with a disclaimer, because the Bottle Man metagame is very different from the Beatamon one. Obviously, bottle caps are lighter than marbles, and they'll shoot from a bottle man at a much higher speed than a Bidama would shoot from a Beatamon. But because they have less mass, they have less momentum. They're also a hollow piece of plastic, so a lot of that force kind of rebounds back on itself instead of transferring into the target. Basically, a very fast reading on the Beast Bee doesn't exactly translate into power. 
It's even more complicated with Kolomaru, because while Aquasports and Gyokurok devote their forces to pure speed, Kolomaru transfers a lot of his into spin power. His shots get slower readings on the Beastie, but if you hit the target just right, that spin shot will more effectively transfer energy into the target, resulting in a more powerful impact. All of this is to say the Beastie is less reliable for testing the power of a Bottleman than it is for Beatamon. But these readings are still useful data points to have, so let's do it anyway. We're going to start by using the included official bottle cap, and we're not going to engage the charge in any way. You may recognize that these are readings more typical of a beatamon, and because bottle caps are so much lighter than marbles, you may conclude this means Kolomaru is quite weak, but trust me, I know it's confusing, the spin shot tends to balance everything out. Next, we're going to try the Japanese Coca-Cola bottle cap. As you can see, it typically performs very similarly to the official one. Now let's try the American bottle cap. So it performs okay, but do you hear the way it sounds? It meets a lot of resistance in the core, and it just doesn't feel any good. On top of that, if you try engaging a power shot, it just gets stuck between the hold parts, and that's no fun for anyone. If you have a lot of these lying around, you can use them, but I don't really recommend it. Let's go back to the official ammunition and do some proper charge shots. So pretty effective as far as the pure speed measurement goes, but don't overdo this because that's how you're going to break it. Finally, we're going to do some target practice with our trusty Coke bottle, and hopefully I can demonstrate the spin shot here. I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem at short range, but sometimes when you fail to hit the target just right, the ricochet is spectacular, and it doesn't exactly do a great job at knocking things down. He's a little inconsistent for that reason, and it can be tricky to anticipate exactly how each shot is going to react to its target. Now, I'm not going to put too much pressure into the arms, but I am going to rest my fingers on the claws just to give him a little bit of extra power. And that is why I say this guy is super flashy. It is so fun watching bottle caps spin around the battlefield. Kolomaru might not be the best bottle man, but he's got so much style, it's hard not to love. At least on a superficial level. He's fun, he looks cool, he's got that main character energy, and his arm parts are great for combos. But the practicality of his core gimmick is hit or miss, and those developing stress marks are tough to swallow. All I'm saying is, if this guy shatters like fine china because you handled it too roughly, I tried to warn you. Hopefully the cores of future Bottlemen are better fortified. Until next time, this has been Rollout, signing off.